we're going to start. And uh, it is a great pleasure to uh, introduce Professor Lazio Paolino, who is Professor in Civil Engineering at the Princeton University. That one where also Einstein was a professor. He has been professor at the Tech and he is a member of the National Academy of Engineering of the United States. He has received many prestigious international awards by the Rucker Medal of the ESMP and the Perisco Award of ESP. MP, and also the Midway Medal of the PSCE. Okay, but beyond the long <coughs> academic curriculum, uh, uh, I appreciated very much uh, his inventive approach, always based on rigorous mathematics to engineering problems, and I think that uh, some of the researchers in my group was very inspired by this work of this mission. I am very happy with this mission. Let's hope we can start a project. Yes. I give you the floor. I'll continue with my talk before I go on. The work that I am going to show here has been done with the help of several people, including uh, Tuo Zhao from Princeton, Efigeni Filipov, Tokiro Tashi, Horacio Espinosa, Siri Da Krishna Sami. Diego Miceroni from uh, University of Trento, Italian, a great collaborator, a great scientist, great engineer, great experimentalist, and uh, Professor Ke Liu from Peking University. Chris, where are you? Uh, Professor Ke Liu, thank you very much. A lot of the work I am going to do was done with uh, Professor Ke Liu, and uh, he worked uh, on his thesis both on tensegrity and uh, origami. That reminds me of your talk. Uh, Fernando, and uh, one of uh, the things uh, we have been working on, although I, can, I will not talk about it, is the investigation of the mathematical duality between the two assemblies, between tensegrity and origami. And uh, maybe that could be an area of collaboration in the future, right? And uh, uh, Pradeep Pratapa, Larissa Novellino, Heimin Wei, Nicolas Alderet, and Zhao Enlui. And uh, I would like to acknowledge also the sponsors, uh, NSF, uh, JSPS, the Council of Science and Technology of Princeton, and uh, the Margaret Augustine uh, Professorship uh, for the sponsorship of uh, this research. Uh, origami is so pervasive that uh, last year, uh, National Geographic did this special issue on uh, origami. And uh, the key idea is that the future is folded how origami is reshaping our world. And uh, for example, here is a key example about origami. In general, origami is folding only. And uh, this is uh, an origami in the category of super complex by Satoshi Kamiya. And uh, this is the dragon model. This is, uh, look how complex this is. And uh, look at the level of detail, the head, uh, the horn, uh, the feet, uh, the claws. And look at the scale of the dragon. The crease pattern is asymmetrical, yet at the end it produces a symmetric pattern. And uh, how many, do you know how many pieces of paper were used to do this? How many? One, only one, right? Only one, folding only. There you go. And uh, if you ever go to Japan, please visit the Origami Gallery. This uh, is in Expo in Japan. In origami gallery. And uh, now instead of continuing with the introduction, what we did was to prepare a brand new video, and this I am releasing it now for you, just became ready, that uh, gives the motivation and explains uh, everything that uh, we have done in our research group in the field of origami. Let me share this with you. Here's a few of the 
Roma most of these problems are not so many frontiers in engineering. Transforming the oil structures, solving complex challenges with elements. The design of the metal material is third in the city of The advantages of such smart designs are particularly important. The design inspired by the new robotic farm doesn't just bring new rigidity, but also guarantees new customers as well as the world. Preventing some fractures in the structure's vulnerable points. In times of disaster, we can use lightweight, rigid hardware structures to bring deployable solutions directly to the southern population. With each material we incorporate into that design, we unlock a new one of our solutions. And uh, now I'll tell you about uh, a few applications uh, in the field of origami. The first one is on Lego metamaterials. Also has some resemblance to what uh, Fernando uh, has just shown. And uh, the main difference is that here we are using origami. And uh, we are uh, working on modular, reconfigurable, and uh, multi-stable origami assemblies. This is an unpublished work, but I wanted to tell you something new, something that Hopefully you will find it exciting. And then what happened is, in general, origami is based on shells, right? Uh, thin sur surfaces, right? But then uh, this is a, a shell assembly of uh, the Kreslin pattern. And uh, here is a realization using a truss configuration. And uh, then when uh, we look at this system, then uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, the Kreslin assembly here, it has two stable states. Then uh, we can use, uh, can write, for example, the elastic energy of the system, uh, assuming that uh, we look at the energy, for example, the stretching energy for the mountain increases that are highlighted, uh, that uh, are associated with uh, the mountains in the origami and the valley crisis associated with uh, the valleys in the origami and uh, then this analogy between the shell-based one and the truss-based one, and uh, then we can uh, write uh, the potential energy, then we have the external work, essentially very similar to what Fernando showed. Uh, with the Kreslin, we have a coupling between uh, the two degrees of freedom, the axial one and the twist. You can get uh, any one of them by controlling the other, and uh, this is the key idea of this research. It's the key idea. For example, the visual uh, you that uh, you saw, you saw the robot that uh, was walking uh, clearly, uh, for example, in a longitudinal way, that was having axial movements. We don't know how to make the robot have axial movement. We have no clue, no idea how to do that. But we know how to make the magnetic place twist, and when it twists, because uh, the two degrees of freedom are coupled, then the robot can move, right? All right, uh, then uh, we can uh, use the principle of minimum potential energy for this and find the two stable states. And uh, the two uh, angle configurations are shown here. We can calculate them mathematically. And uh, you can see here this the energy versus the twisting angle. And notes that uh, here the energy 
for these two systems, phi1 and phi0, is 0. And this will be very different toward the end of the talk because we are going to have frustrated systems where this base energy is not 0. Okay? So, and this allows us to program instability via geometry and material. For example, let's start first with geometry. This is a 4 gone, a 6 gone, and 8 gone. And uh, a key detail here to make this, uh, to make the kinematics work for the Kresling, then uh, is to make this flexible joint here that you have seen with a uh, soft material. And uh, then uh, when we look at the elastic energy versus the twist angle, as we decrease the number of uh, edges in the polygon, then the energy increases. And uh, similarly, I can uh, look, uh, I can keep the polygon fixed, let's say a 6 gone, and then uh, as I change the material properties, for example, increases the modulus, then uh, the energy increases, and then uh, I can play with these two things. And uh, then I also need to be uh, careful to, when I assemble the different units, to make them compatible, as uh, you can see here. And uh, right now, at this stage of the work, then uh, we have a requirement to match the chirality of the system, however, recently we have relaxed uh, this requirement. So, we wanted to have a rational, a formal, a mathematical way to design the uh, origami system that will have the behavior that we want, and here we use topology optimization and the base mean max approach, and uh, here is the mean max, and uh, essentially we, there's a list of squares where we are uh, looking at uh, the difference between the load factors, the calculated one and the expected one. The design variables are just the areas of the cross-section. Here I am not using a continuous topology optimization, I am using a ground structure-based one. Then we solve the, we have a volume constraint, uh, we solve the nonlinear state equations, and with this formulation we have a very nice closed form solution sensitivities so that we can guide the optimizer. And uh, here, we use a ground structure approach. What uh, it is, is the following. Then, uh, if this is the design domain, for example, this room, then uh, we sprinkle points, thousands, hundreds, millions of points, and connect each point with every other point. The optimizer is going to remove almost 100% of the points, but not 100, because most of, 100% of the members, but not 100, because most of them are not needed. They leave only point few percent of uh, the members. And if everything works well, those are the members that uh, we need. For example, here is a, a simple ground structure. At the end, uh, this is the initial gas. Of course, optimization is susceptible to the initial gas. And then uh, at the end, most of the members were eliminated. We get this one, and this is the actual one that uh, we used. And here is uh, the load factor of the vertical displacement. I have that from experiments, or I may want that kind of behavior. And uh, this is the optimal uh, nonlinear behavior that uh, we obtain. And uh, that's what we are going to use from now on. And uh, here is a case where uh, I put uh, the uh, eight gone uh, with the chiral arrangement, and then the six gone and then the four gone. As you can see, because here I am only playing with the geometry, this one will buckle first, and then next uh, this one and if everything goes well, the next one, right? Okay, and uh, what can we do with this? Now uh, we can do many arrangements, for example, in 1D, similar to some of the, of the arrangements that Fernando did, and changing plane with the material, the geometry, then I can get a, a lot of different behaviors. And then, for example, I can also try to do a 3D arrangement. And since these are metamaterials, materials are in 3D, we have to do a 3D arrangement. And here, for example, we have one where uh, we have uh, several uh, multiple uh, stable states. And uh, see the peak load keep increasing by design. This was done by design. And uh, how does this work? For example, just take a look here. Uh, just pay attention that uh, the blue is the weakest one, and then uh, the next one is the yellow, and the next one is the white. No matter where you put them, this gives you an, a, an, a way to design a huge number of different materials with different behavior. 
and then uh, you see first uh, the blue is activated, then uh, the next uh, is the white, and uh, finally the next is the yellow, independent of uh, where you are. And uh, this uh, is uh, quite, uh, just to show you that uh, this really works, yeah, now the yellow does its job. And uh, this gives us a way to program multi-stability using the same set of Lego cells. We do some uh, outreach activities, and uh, the kids love this. When the children come to the lab, then, uh, for example, we have these 3D arrangements, and we give them the Legos, and just ask them, and it's the same number of Legos. Then uh, they can uh, place them any way that uh, they wish, and then I showed you here the placement. And then this gives us a, a way to create some new materials with a different type of behavior. And uh, you can see here, for example, I put a contour here uh, along each one. This one is red, blue, uh, white, and pink. And then, uh, for example, this one has this type of behavior. You see increasing in, uh, uh, peak loads. This one, uh, the same uh, peak load. It's very interesting. For example, uh, for... Uh, Every car, right, uh, you have uh, the crash zone, right? Uh, because if there is a, a crash, then uh, you want the energy dissipation system of the car to absorb the energy, and uh, you want to limit uh, the peak load. You don't want the load to go to the passenger because it can kill the passenger. So this could be a very nice application of this idea. And uh, here is one where the two uh, peaks are at the same level, and here the two peaks, the first two, are at the same level, and so on and so forth, okay? And uh, the mechanics of uh, the Kresling is very beautiful, and uh, there has been a lot, lot, lots of work. Do you agree, Hunching? Professor Hunching is one of the first guys who wrote uh, papers on the Kresling. There is a huge amount of literature now in the Kresling. Do you agree? Right? Including yours. <laughs> And then uh, there has been, uh, we needed to have uh, a good way to understand uh, how this behaves. And uh, then uh, we wrote this paper on Kresling, origami mechanics, explain, experiments, and theory. Oh, this was done in collaboration with Shishi too, and Professor Diego Miceroni from Italy, from the University of Trento. And uh, if you are interested to see this latest uh, piece of work, the paper is available in JMPS, was published a few weeks ago. And uh, recently, we also extended this work to origami robotics. Where we have a mo a modular multi-degree of freedom soft origami robots with reprogrammable electrothermal actuation. This was published last month in uh, PNAS. And uh, we were very happy that I made the cover of uh, PNAS. And uh, essentially, the robot is inspired on the caterpillar. Essentially, this branch here is a biomimetic mirror. And then uh, you can see here is the living uh -huh. caterpillar. And uh, here is our origami robot. And uh, you can see that uh, we are essentially using the Kresling cells. And uh, the electrothermal actuators are the orange ones. And uh, what is the idea? The idea is, you see, we have two electrothermal actuators, one on each side, one here, one on the other side. When we do not break the rotational symmetry, then, uh, and we actuate the units, then uh, the cell will have this movement, will shrink or elongate. However, when we break the rotational symmetry, we actuate only one electrothermal cell, then uh, it will bend. Right? And uh, the combination of uh, these two degrees of freedom is what allows this robot uh, to move in very interesting ways, and not just move. I don't like robots that only move, because what's the point of just moving? You have to have functions, you have to have functionality. And these robots can also have functionality, can do uh, cargo transport, uh, can do delivery, and the things of uh, that nature. If you want to know more about the details, I refer you to this paper in PNA. It's very easy to find, it was just uh, published last month. Now, I have uh, talked to you about uh, tubes and the tubular arrangement. I mean, this is one example. The Kresling is another example. And then now I would like to talk about uh, origami-inspired metamaterials, and I will concentrate on this example here. That is based on uh, this uh, zipper tube. 
that you see over here. The only difference is that you can clearly see this is at the meter scale, right? And uh, here, if you look at this scale bar, this is 30 microns. Therefore, the metamaterial made of those units is about 100 microns. That's the size of your hair. So this is how this works. This is a work on microscale origami architected metamaterials exhibiting macroscale reversible auxeticity. And then the key idea is to have the uh, zipper type uh, arrangement in this direction, that is this arrangement that you see here, and uh, the align coupling in this direction so that we can form this uh, metamaterial. And uh, here is a scanning electron microscope of uh, this realization, and this was done using two photon lithography and a uh, nano machine. And uh, here you can see the size of the features. Uh, you can see the plates are around 14 microns, and uh, the thickness of each plate is in the range of one micron or so. And uh, here, uh, there are many examples in the paper. I just want to call your attention for a couple of things. Here, for example, look uh, how interesting. These, these materials are highly anisotropic. Uh, they can have a huge uh, amount of behavior. And uh, here, for example, we just tested uh, in situ SEM testing uh, in the X direction. And then uh, we see here the stress behavior. We use the IP, the IP type polymeric material is a viscous elastic type material, then uh, we load it by modulating, loading, modulating, loading, and uh, then uh, you can see after each modulation you have some change of stiffness in the system, and then you can see here this is stage one, when we started, the load is being applied at the top, you can see here that at five, then uh, there was a huge amount of displacement, you see here that we have uh, an elastic uh, type of behavior, and then a kind of a plateau, right? And uh, then when we unload here, what is very interesting is that uh, after a while, half an hour, one hour, we, it almost uh, returned to the original position. And uh, very interesting, we do the same test, just change the direction. Now I do it in the y direction, then uh, the behavior changes, because now I have a hardening type of behavior. And uh, this work uh, was uh, published uh, in the journal Small. The reference is here. And uh, this is one of uh, the cover of uh, the journal. It's also another reference for you to look for the publication that has uh, all the details. So I then uh, talked about uh, tubular arrangements, uh, cylindrical type like the Kresling, zipper types like uh, this one. And uh, from now on, I am uh, going to talk about tessellations. Okay. And uh, then, uh, for example, uh, maybe the most uh, famous uh, developable material, maybe what is called the Mugawari, that, uh, you are, that is shown here. And uh, maybe one of the most famous non-developable is uh, the egg box, that is this one that is shown here. The in-plane behavior of the Mura is very interesting because uh, it has in-plane uh, negative Poisson ratio. That means that uh, you stretch in one direction, you stretch in all the directions and has a positive out-of-plane behavior that is uh, shown here with this uh, saddle-type behavior when you apply bending. The egg box is the opposite. When uh, you do in-plane stretch, for example, it has a positive Poisson ratio like most materials. However, when you apply bending, it forms a dome. As you can see there, that is very typical of uh, materials with auxetic materials. So, uh, these uh, tessellations have been studied a lot, and uh, there is a lot of elegance in the geometric mechanics of uh, these systems. For example, the group at Harvard uh, studied the Miura Oris, they parametrized it, as you can see over there, and then they develop uh, analytical expressions to compute the Poisson ratio in bending and in stretch. And uh, if you pay attention, it's quite striking because the magnitude is the same, they only change by the sign, right? only the sign. Later, the group at uh, France, they studied the egg box and they derived analytical solutions and uh, they also computed the Poisson ratio in bending and the stretch and you see again that uh, the only difference is the sign between the two. This is quite if you take a look here, the, these are two different types of materials, right? Uh, Miura is Miura, egg box is egg box. 
the question is, uh, could we have uh, this type of uh, totally different behavior in the same material system? And uh, it turns out that the answer is yes. When we created this single morphing metamaterial, essentially, if we encode all the units in the neural mode, it will behave like this one. But, but now, if I just pick up this one and change the encoding to egg box, it will behave like this one and uh, may have even uh, more different types of behavior. <coughs> and uh, here, for example, is uh, the simulation of uh, the results of uh, all the units encoded in the MURA uh, that has the behavior that uh, I showed before, and uh, all the units encoded in the egg box mode that has the uh, expected uh, behavior that uh, I showed before. Now, uh, we also developed some uh, analytical uh, expressions. We study the Poisson ratio of uh, these systems, and uh, then uh, we derive an anal analytical expression for the Poisson ratio in bending. The Poisson ratio in bending is uh, similar to the one in stretch. The definition is uh, the negative of the ratio of curvatures, okay? like uh, similar to the one in stretch, that is the negative of the ratio of stretches. And uh, then we found uh, this solution here in general. The solutions in origami, they tend to, have a very, they tend to be very elegant, to have uh, a lot of uh, beauty, not just in the geometry, but also in the math. Even the shape of these expressions are quite interesting, quite meaningful. And uh, you also can see that uh, the, we also derived uh, the Poisson ratio in stretch, and you can see that uh, they have the same magnitude, they only differ by the sign. And uh, moreover, all the previous solutions for, let's say, the ones I showed before, they become particular cases of this general solution. And uh, this is uh, summarized in a paper that we wrote in PRL on uh, geometric mechanics of origami patterns exhibiting Poisson's ratio switch by breaking mountain and valley assignment. That was done in collaboration with Professor Kelly. This was part of his uh, PhD work. And Professor Pradeep Paratapa from uh, IIT Madras. Uh, and then later, we generalized uh, some of these ideas to derive a mathematical formalism based on uh, the first and second fundamental forms of uh, differential geometry to show that discrete symmetries control geometric mechanics in parallelogram-based origami. All the previous origami I showed, they are parallelogram-based. And uh, in this uh, work, uh, you have operators that are based uh, on the origami itself. Uh, let's say operators that are based on the vertex on the edge, on the panel, and the patch operators. And uh, then uh, these allow us to derive a, a very interesting uh, mechanics theory that uh, can explain the behavior. And I refer you to this paper in uh, PNAS. So coming back to the morph pattern. Then uh, essentially, uh, here is the morph. And I am going to talk a lot about these two angles here, C and phi, that uh, you can see the angles between uh, these edges here and these two edges here in the orthogonal directions. And uh, I have two angles that are alpha, two angles that are beta. If all these angles are equal, this is the egg box pattern. This is the one you see. If uh, they add to pi, then uh, this is the Miura uh, pattern that you see here. And then uh, when we look at uh, this design space here, you look at alpha versus beta, you can see, as I said, when alpha equals beta, I get the red line. That's the egg box mode. When uh, alpha plus beta equals pi, I get the Miura mode, the blue line. But then this pattern allows us also to explore all the yellow space that includes the previous configurations. And uh, let's see what we get with this. So now we have a single pattern at a different folded states, where we start with a flat folded state one. It manages to an egg box mode, has a transition mode, where uh, the flat is to another flat folded mode. It has two flat folded modes. And uh, now, something interesting is that uh, if we look, for example, at uh, that angle phi, for example, this angle uh, here versus the uh, Poisson ratio, and this is not my work, this is just copying from the literature, we know that the Poisson ratio, let's say for different panel angles, is positive. This is from the literature, this is not my work. 
And uh, also, this is from the literature. We just copied here. Uh, if you look at the Miura, then uh, this is the Poisson ratio versus the angle phi. And then uh, you can see for any angle, then uh, the Poisson ratio will always be negative, as we expected. But uh, take a look here. This does not change signs, right? Uh, egg box positive, Miura negative. But uh, with the morph, then, uh, for example, if I choose uh, the alpha angle to be, let's say, 60 degrees, I can change from negative to positive. And I will illustrate this to you. You may say, well, this is just theory. I will show you experimentally also. And uh, then uh, looking at the configura configurational space, then uh, we look at, again, I'll talk a lot about this C and phi angles uh, space that you see here. Then uh, you can see that uh, essentially I made here alpha plus beta equal 100 degrees. When, uh, let's say, we take uh, this one, we Mode, the gray line is a transition mode. This will be a maximum. And, then it will be and uh, then uh, if uh, the angles are equal, as we have seen, then this uh, degenerates to the egg box. That's uh, this solution here. And uh, these allow us, for example, to explore some interesting things. For example, how about uh, kinematic bifurcation? And then uh, if you just uh, take a look here, then uh, I start, uh, just to illustrate this, I start with all these units in the box mode, as you can see here. This space is uh, phi1 is equal to phi3 versus phi2. So they will reach this uh, bifurcation point. Units will transition from the egg box. Miura mode, as you can see here. Then it will go back to that uh, bifurcation point, and now I am going to get a hybrid mode where the unit cells at the end point they transition from Miura mode to egg box mode, forming a hybrid pattern, as you can see. Then I have both, I have a mixed uh, pattern over there. And then uh, these are things that I can explore when doing the material design. What can we do with this? For example, if I include all the units at the left as a Miura, all the units at the right as egg box, then it will look like this. If I apply bending, this bends more or less like the egg box, and this one has this saddle type behavior, bends more or less like uh, Miura, and in between is something in between, right? Or I can uh, alternate the encoding and uh, have a behavior like this. Or I can uh, try other configurations, and I refer to you to the paper, and now the experimental validation. Does this theory make sense? Uh, here we used one millimeter thick uh, polypropylene sheet milled with the CNC machine, and maybe I can make a connection with uh, Fernando's talk uh, that uh, the manufacturing is crucial. Okay? Actually, this work took a long time because of me. I, I, was, uh, I was the problem. My students were saying, you are the problem, professor. I said, yes, sometimes I am. Because I was insisting tremendously, and I think Chris knows that, in the uh, 3D printing. And we failed miserably until we decided to use the CNC machine, and then things worked uh, very well. And not just, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, choosing. This is a question I was going to ask you. It's not just a matter of choosing the manufacturing technique. It's not, it's not as simple as that. The choice of the uh, manufacturing technique will change the formulation, will, will change the behavior, will change the mechanics. It's not just choosing, oh no, I want to do this or that. It's not as trivial like that, okay? It's extremely important. I will not have time to address that but in the talk, but I will be here the rest of the week. I'll be glad to talk to you about this, but uh, this is the thing that we learn. And probably you may have a similar experience. So here, uh, then we did uh, the uh, milling machine, this is the CNC. And uh, one key, one big problem also was the experimental uh, configuration. In general, if you try these tessellations and put them in the instrument machine, for example, a special one as you can see here, you always have this dog bone uh, shape type and uh, this terrible. And uh, these things tend to jump in the, the testing machine and the results tend to be terrible. Not a good idea. And uh, we were thinking, how can we test the periodic system? And uh, the key idea was uh, to design uh, special features that will allow us 
to eliminate this dog bone uh, shape and have a uniform transverse deformation. And uh, this uh, work, this novel setup for origami experiments, is summarized it in this paper here in Extreme Mechanics Letters. And uh, I will not show you this fixture now, but I'll show you later. Just believe me that uh, we achieved that, but I'll show you the details of this fixture later, okay? Because it's very interesting. And now, the uh, experimental results. So here is just one sheet that will be tested, and uh, let's see how this will behave. I will start with no Miura uh, cells. Everything uh, is in the egg box mode. Uh, this is the tessellation. Everything is egg box. And I am going to look at the change of this angle, OK? And uh, then you can see here the behavior. Uh, this is the test. And uh, you can see here that uh, we have uh, essentially three lines. Uh, the first one is the theory, analytical. The second one, the blue one, are the experiments. And uh, the yellow one is uh, the one that was obtained with the Merlin software. The Merlin software is a simplified uh, model to be able to do origami simulations to capture the nonlinear mechanics of non-rigid origami very fast. Because if we try to do a simulation of a tessellation like that using finite elements, for example, and shell elements, this can be done, but it will take a while. But with Merlin, is an amazing piece of software, and uh, this was uh, done, this was part of uh, the great uh, PhD thesis of Professor Leo. It's uh, an amazing piece of software. If you want to know more about Merlin, talk to me or talk to him. Okay? And uh, actually, when we were doing this work, and uh, when uh, I saw this agreement, I even thought there was some mistake. I thought that's not possible that this matching is so perfect. But uh, the main reason for that was because of the new fixture. And uh, if we uh, didn't have the fixture, it's nothing like that. It's uh, really terrible. And it tends to jump uh, because uh, some units tend to pop up in the machine. And then this jumps and the results are not very good. Now. I, the same uh, tessellation, I just uh, included one Miura cell, and uh, now you can see that it tends to go to the next expected, and uh, here you can see the agreement between the experiment, the theory, and uh, the Merlin simulation. Okay. And uh, the next one, I'm just to show the, uh, change the encoding to have two Miura units. Okay. It's the same, the same material, same tessellation, with different material behavior. And uh, now you can see I have two Miura units. And this is my favorite. This is very interesting because it has almost a zero Poisson ratio for the entire range of uh, the test, almost. And then at the end, uh, because Miura dominates, then uh, it becomes negative, as you can see. And uh, then finally, I change the encoding, and I have all the units in the Miura mode. And as we expected, if they are all Miura, this has to be negative. And uh, that's what this uh, video will show. And then uh, you have seen here the development of uh, the theory, the experimental results, and the simulations to study these tessellations with uh, different material encodings. All right. And uh, then later we generalize this, uh, not, to, not just uh, for the origami, uh, the Miura, the egg box, and the morph, but we generalize to understand the geometric mechanics of hybrid origami assemblies, combining developable and non-developable patterns in a large class of patterns. And uh, the formulation and the theory is uh, explained in this paper in the Royal Society that was published uh, recently and also made the cover of uh, the journal. And uh, I refer you to the paper for the details. Now, uh, what happened is I have shown you that uh, we could create line defects. Uh, but can we create uh, defects in uh, more than one direction? And uh, for example, here is uh, a line defect, and here I have two. And then uh, I am going to have both a line defect and a point defect here. And uh, this can move locations, or I can have uh, more, for example, can have uh, two point defects uh, and line defects and so on. And uh, the answer to this question is yes. And uh, this is summarized in this paper that we published in uh, Advanced Materials and also made uh, one of the covers of uh, the journal. And uh, here 
is the trimorph origami pattern. And essentially, the key idea is this one here, that uh, we have the, let's say, the Mura, the egg box that we have seen, and here is the trimorph. The key difference is that, as we know, if egg box, all the angles are alpha, Mura, the, um, the angles are alpha and pi minus alpha, and here I have alpha, alpha plus delta, alpha minus delta. How am I doing on the time? How much time? Eight minutes, plus questions, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, then, uh, here uh, is the pattern I am color coding it, so that uh, it's a parallelogram based, uh, so that uh, you can uh, make reference to yourself, because uh, color helps to identify the kinematics of the pattern, and uh, this angles here. Delta. And uh, then uh, if uh, we look here, this is the triclinic space, and uh, here is the, the pattern in a Cartesian frame, and uh, we can uh, derive this implicit expression here as a function of these angles phi and uh, psi. And uh, these uh, uh, coefficients C, D, and E, they are just functions of uh, these angles alpha and delta, okay? And uh, now I can look at the configuration space, and then uh, you can see that uh, this pattern then uh, has uh, seven distinct states. I start here, this range is one type of Miura uh, mode, then it changes to the egg box mode, and it changes to another Miura mode, okay? And then these are different phases of the matter, all right? And then uh, if you take a look here, if I look at this uh, phi versus psi angle, then uh, this uh, shape is similar to this. But however, when I get to 90 degrees, this mode disappears. There is only yellow and blue curves here. And then this will morph to another pattern that is called Barreto Mars. And the uh, Barreto is very good to study, for example, fictional properties, uh, this kind of... Uh, applications. And uh, here uh, is uh, another way where I just change the angle delta. Delta, when uh, delta is equal to zero, then uh, the Miura modes disappear. Uh, if the pattern degenerates to the egg box. If uh, delta is different from zero, then I have all the modes of uh, the material. I have all the phases. And uh, this allows me to connect uh, the math of spherical trigonometry and the states of matter and to look at the Gauss map of Time off. Here is the Mura type one, uh, Mura type two, and the egg box. And here are the Gauss maps. You can see that, as we know, the Mura Gauss map is uh, a bow tie, but uh, the key difference is that uh, they change orientation, right? And uh, here, as we expect, this is a spherical polygon, a spherical quad. And uh, we also looked at uh, the lattice Poisson ratio and the shear normal coupling because we are not in a orthogonal frame, and we are going to. Uh, take a, a quick look at this, because uh, this is the theory, and uh, I also want to show you some of the experiments. And uh, I want to show you the fixture that uh, allow us to test periodic systems. And uh, this is the key idea of uh, the fixture here. That uh, you can see we have a system of a rail and uh, sliders, okay? And uh, a lot of details to connect this system to the pattern itself. Here is a locking system, I mode, okay? And here is a two-piece PMMA connector that will allow us to connect this with the pattern itself. What is the key idea of this? The key idea is that we don't know what the correct boundary conditions are, but the machine, the system, if this works, will choose the correct boundary conditions. And uh, that's what I, I am uh, going to illustrate to you. And uh, in the interest of time, I have uh, two experiments here, one that we change from positive to negative Poisson ratio, and the other one the opposite. I like the other one better. Yeah, this one. And uh, I want to call your attention, please uh, pay attention, that uh, when the, the experiment is done, we are choosing the correct boundary conditions. Can you see the, the correct boundary conditions being chosen? Please pay attention here. Can you see? And then I am, I am going from negative to a positive Poisson ratio, 
and uh, then uh, the shear normal coupling is also changing, and uh, then when everything tends to be dominated by the egg box mode, then uh, the uh, shear normal coupling tends to be minimized, close to zero. But could you, could you see that? Uh, could, excellent. Okay. And uh, now, finally, frustration. Uh, design of tri stability and frustration. Frustration can be a fantastic thing, a fantastic uh, technique to design new materials. And then what we did is uh, to look, make uh, two of the stiffness of uh, folding stiffness of uh, the hinges uh, to be the same, and two of them to be zero. Since this is the same, this uh, energy contour here will be circular, and uh, this is the gamma one space. And then uh, when the kinematic path, let's say we have these states one, two, and three. This uh, two is the egg box mode, right? Because uh, this gamma one is a 45 degree line. So gamma one is equal to gamma two. And uh, this is a, a pre stress system. Stiffness, the folding is stiffness, I'll show you, they are finite. It pre stresses the system. And therefore, now from now on, all the base energies, all the minimum equilibrium states, they will not be at zero energy like in the Kreslin pattern that I showed you in the beginning of uh, the presentation. And then uh, I can change, for example, from uh, this uh, state to this one or to that one. And here, like a, 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 a Traza, right, uh, only has uh, two uh, stable states. Note that uh, here we have three, right? We have three zeros there. And please note that uh, these states here, seven and four, they are completely different, right? Uh, and uh, there is a discontinuity there. And uh, finally, I just want to show you here this uh, triclinic unit cell so that you can understand all the details and uh, think about the frustration to design uh, new materials. Oops. And uh, uh, yeah, here are uh, the cells and uh, here are the uh, hinges that will pre-stress the system and these are the free hinges. And uh, then when you look at the, here, here are the experiments and here's the theory. I am changing from this state to that one and from this state to that one. And there is a very good uh, agreement uh, here with uh, these results. And uh, then uh, these results also they translate into the 1D uh, system and also to the 2D tessellation, as you can see here. In the interest of time, I will move on. And uh, there's a summary. Uh, and uh, <coughs> finally, what uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, we did the simulations, for example, of uh, these uh, hybrid modes and uh, the creation of one line defect and two line defect. And uh, here we use Merlin to do that. And here is the energy versus the displacements. And uh, we tracked uh, the folding energy, the bending energy, and the stretching energy. And you can see here that most energy is bending, some uh, is folding, some bending, and a little bit of a stretch. But the very interesting space is this one here, that uh, this solid line here is the rigid origami behavior. When I go from one to two, then uh, the behavior is almost uh, rigid. However, when I go from this to that one where I create point defects, then it becomes uh, highly non-rigid and it becomes highly frustrated. And uh, this is a summary of uh, everything that I have shown. Thank you very much.